to Sherry's Heavenly Apothecary. I'm Sherry coming to you from my studio in the basement. Welcome. Today I'm really excited because I'm continuing the DIY self-care series and I'm making a body butter. Now today's body butter is going to be a thicker product. It is not emulsified with water. We are just using simply butter and oils and a little bit of essential oil for fragrance. And if you'd like to make it a little less greasy, I'll show you how to do that as well. This butter is going to be whipped and it is going to be luxurious. So if this sounds good to you and you are interested, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you very much. I really appreciate having you along on the journey. And without further ado, let's get to making some anhydrous luxurious body butter. As usual, I'll be putting the recipe up in the text and also in the description box down below. I'm going to be working in grams today, but I'm going to tell you the percentages in case you wanted to make a bigger or a smaller batch. So in here, and I'm gonna look at my notes, so you'll be hearing the, my little notebook here. I just have my, my trusty old notebook that I write everything in, so you'll be hearing me turn the pages of that. So the formula today is 65% butter. Now I'm using shea butter and I'm working in grams and I'm making an eight ounce batch, which is 226.7 grams. I'm working in grams, but I wanted eight ounces. So 65% shea butter. And what shea butter offers is it is full of vitamins A and E and essential fatty acids. It's moisturizing, conditioning, and it offers healing properties. It's a natural skin protectant. It's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antibacterial, antifungal. It boosts collagen and cell generation, and it prevents acne and it is safe for all skin types. So we are going to be using 147.35 grams, that's what I have in here, to make up our eight ounces. So we want 65%, 147.35 grams of shea butter. I get my shea butter from Lotion Crafters. It's all natural shea butter. It smells divine. I'm going to see if I can open it with my gloves on. You can't smell because this isn't smell-o-vision, but you can see just how lovely that is. I wish you could smell it. Mm, it has a wonderful, smoky, nutty scent that I just love. Like I said before, I either love it or I don't. And if I don't like the smell of shea butter, it's because it's probably gone rancid. But fresh shea butter? Mmm. So I get mine from Lotion Crafters, or at least I did this time. I kind of just shop around and wherever I, I can get it from, I do. If I'm buying other things from Lotion Crafters, then I will typically buy butters or oils because I like to get the lowest price on the shipping. And if I need something that is kind of a specialty item that they carry, then I will get something else along with it. But otherwise, I get my butters off Amazon. I like the Ancient Health Remedies butters. Theirs are really good on Amazon and they have really good prices and they're organic. And then over here we have 23.5% avocado oil and that is 53.27 grams. Avocado oil is a heavier oil it does have medium absorption rate. It takes a little longer to absorb. It has a ton of antioxidants. It helps to heal dry, irritated, and flaky skin. It increases moisture levels in the skin and it makes it softer and smoother. Some people don't like using it in body butter because it is heavier and we already have the heavy butters, but that's what I'm looking for. This is suitable for all skin types. So this is the avocado oil that I'm using. 
and it is 100% natural. I got it from my local grocery store. Okay. And then next up, we have lovely coconut oil. That's going in at 10%, and so today we're using 22.67 grams. That will help make up our eight ounce batch here. So 10% coconut oil, 22.67 grams. Now, if you don't want to use coconut oil, you can use babasu oil or babasu oil. I've talked about that before. It has the same consistency as coconut oil. If you have allergies to coconut, that's a great, great alternative for you. Okay, this is the one that I use. I got this one from my local grocer. It's Crisco brand and it is USDA certified organic. What coconut oil does is it protects from damaging microorganisms. It's highly absorbable. It reduces inflammation. It's antibacterial, antifungal. It brings moisture into the skin and traps it there, which is what we want. And it is a lovely, lovely addition in our body butter. And then, in here we also have a half a percent 0 0.5 percent of vitamin e oil i'm using this one today you can just use whichever vitamin e oil you have we want that in there because it is an antioxidant and it really helps to keep our oils longer it preserves them from going rancid. Now it's not a preservative and you don't need a preservative in this product, okay? This is an anhydrous product, meaning it's all oils, no water is going in it. It's, we don't have anything uh, with water in it, just oil and butter. So we don't need to put a preservative in. But what I will say is you do want vitamin E in there to protect the oils actually to preserve the oils and keep them from going rancid longer. It preserves it a little longer, okay? It keeps the oils from going rancid. It doesn't protect from microorganisms or bacterias, but it does keep the oils oxidated longer because of the antioxidants in it, okay? It also is very healing and very soothing. Like I said, it helps preserve the shelf life of the oils and it moisturizes, reduces skin itching, and it's been known to prevent skin cancer, which I'm also, you know, which I'm a very big fan of. Okay, so that is vitamin E oil. I also did add, this is just an additive, this isn't part of the recipe, but I'd added some super primrose in. I have these uh, capsules and I put two of them in just because I like evening primrose. It provides a wonderful skin feel. It's hormone balancing and it just gives it a little something something. So I threw that in there. You don't have to put that in there or you can, or you can put something else in there. You can put Moringa oil a couple drops. This isn't rocket science, so you can put a few things in there. It's not going to hurt a thing. Now, for scent over here, I have vanilla. It is a very aromatic oil and it gives it a lovely, lovely scent. It's also moisturizing, anti-aging. It soothes and calms the skin. It promotes healing. It reduces the appearance of scars. It improves skin tone. It enhances skin elasticity. It boosts collagen production and it reduces inflammation aside from providing a lovely natural fragrance. We don't have to use fragrance oils. So we're putting that in at 0.5% because our essential oils are going in at 1% of our recipe today. So that's 2.26 grams. And I put in a half a percent, 0.5% of the vanilla and a half a percent of the jasmine. And what jasmine does besides providing a natural fragrance is it's good for dry skin. It has healing and restorative properties, anti-aging, moisturizing, and it's very good for sensitive skin. And boy, does this combination smell lovely. I made some deodorants with 
the jasmine vanilla scent and went to a craft show and those just sold right out because the smell is just lovely. So I decided I wanted something subtle, but yet, you know, florally. So that's why I chose those two today. So I have this old sunbeam mixer that looks like it's right out of the 50s. I got it at the local thrift store, as I always do for DIY products, and it works fabulously. So we're going to go ahead and put our butter and our oils in there. And we're gonna melt those down on the double boiler. Just a saute pan uh, with some water, about a couple inches of water, and I'm gonna set this in there, let it melt down. I don't like to put things in the microwave because I don't want them losing their beneficial properties you know, that I just read off. I don't want all that lost. I want that in the final product. So I feel like heating it down slowly over low heat is going to also help prevent a grainy butter. Cause shea butter is wonderful, but it can also be grainy if it's not treated right during the process. So we wanna put this on the double boiler and not directly on the heat. So in the pan with the water, we're gonna let it melt down on low heat until it's all fully melted. And then we're going to let it cool down. And then we're going to stick it in the refrigerator so that it can harden up. And then we're going to whip it and put our fragrance in it. So I'll bring you back when it's all melted and we're ready for the next step. So here we are in the double boiler. I got this burner from the thrift store as well as the pan, the saute pan. And we're just melting down our butters very slowly. I have a little bit of water simmering on the bottom of the pan, about an inch or two water. That's simmering and we're just gonna let that melt slowly. And We'll come back when we are done. You just want to stir it, getting everything incorporated real nice. And then we're going to let it sit for about 15 minutes so it can cool down. 10 to 15 minutes, give or take. And then we'll stick it in the refrigerator. You don't want to put it in the refrigerator right now while it's hot because that will create a grainy final product. Shea butter can be very grainy because of the fatty acids that are in it. And if we melt it and solidify it right away, it'll do some weird things to those fatty acids and will have grainy texture. And nobody likes a grainy body butter. And I have made a few if it comes out grainy for you, it does work just as well. It's just not as aesthetically pleasing and people don't like that because it feels a little bit more grainy when it goes on, but it melts right into the skin because it melts with your body temp. So we'll go ahead and let it cool down about the next 10 or so minutes and then I'll stick it in the refrigerator and then I'll bring you back when it's set up. We want it all, it doesn't have to be all totally solid, but we want it pretty solid to where you can kind of pump, poke your finger in it, but it's still solid, if that makes sense. I'll show you when we come back, okay? So 10 minutes cool down and then plop it in the refrigerator. Okay, so I just took this out of the refrigerator and you want it to be like that, where you can poke it. If you do get it set up a little harder than that and it sets up, it's fine. It will all whip together. So what we're gonna do, and you can see in my old school find that I got at the thrift store, 
We're going to just start this on low speed and just let it whip. If you want to cut the grease and give it a more silky feel, less greasy, you can add a starch. I'm going to add arrowroot, but you can use tapioca starch, you can use corn starch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon at a time. Mix that in there. body butter. Now you can let it go for about 20 minutes. There's no need to let it go on and on. Um, I just like to get it all incorporated and do about 10 minutes until it comes out looking like a lovely buttercream frosting. For our jar today, we're going to be jarring it up in this cute little jar I got at the Dollar Tree. It's just a cute little jar with a lid. I usually don't use glass in the bathroom, and so I will just be keeping this in my room to put on. I don't use glass products often. It's just a luxurious formula. Now, it is greasy, and some folks don't like that. It's a butter and oil formula, so it's all oils and butter. But it's lovely. It does soak in. It just takes a while. But this is the best thing for my skin. I'm telling you, dry, mature skin, I just love body butter. There is nothing like it. And so here we have our little product, our pot of body butter. You can use any oils you want. You can use any butters you want. I'm giving you the formula in percentages so you can take that formula and use any ingredients you want. You can swap out the shea butter and use a combination. You know, you can use 30%, you know, you can split it in thirds. It's 65% butter, 10% coconut oil, and then 23.5% of liquid oil. So you can do any combination of oils in that order that you want. You can swap out the arrowroot powder for starch, you know, for tapioca starch or corn starch. You can use any starch you want to use, basically. It gives the skin, in terms of arrowroot, now this is the, the starch I use, arrowroot, and this is the brand, Bob's Mills, but arrowroot just gives it a lovely skin feel.
it's like satin and I love that. I ended up putting about a teaspoon and a half total because I was using the half teaspoons and I ended up doing three of those. But yeah, you can see it just smooths the skin out, conditions the skin. So I hope that you will give it a try. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. I'd love to have you along on the journey. And for those of you who are returning subscribers, thank you very much. I appreciate you. And until next time, take good care.